The next idea in this lesson is um, the idea of an exponential function. So what is an exponential function? The definition starts with the base of the exponential function. You know that the base of the exponential function must be a positive number and it cannot equal 1. So if those two conditions are satisfied, then the function that looks like f of x equals b raised to the x power is known as an exponential function with base b. So first of all, we're going to analyze uh, the question, why is it that b cannot equal 1? Let's just take a look at the function y equals 1 to the x. Let's make a table as before. There's x, here's y. Let's choose some values for x, like negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And let's try this. What is 1 raised to the negative 1 power? 1 raised to the negative 1 in 1 over 1 or minus 1. What's 1 to the 0? 1. What about? Sorry about that, I did say 1. What about 1 raised to the first power? 1 again. 1 raised to the second power? One again. This is not a very interesting function because no matter what the input is for x, the output is always going to be 1. So what is the graph of y equal 1 to the x? Well, y equals 1 to the x it turns out to be the graph of y equals just 1, which is a horizontal line. So this is the reason why we're told that b cannot equal 1. One. So let's plot a few points. We have 0, 1, negative 1, 1, 1, 1, and the end result is that the graph of y equals 1 to the x is just a line. So this is a line. It's a linear function, not an exponential function. Okay? Now, the exponential functions themselves are divided into two types of functions functions that represent exponential growth and functions that represent exponential decrease. So we're going to now take a look at what happens when b is between 0 and 1 and what happens when b is greater than 1. If b is between 0 and 1, let's consider something like y equals 1 half raised to the power of x and let's analyze this graph as always easy values x, y and then negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1 and 2 I'll start with positive exponents first so if x is equal to 2, we have y is equal to 1 half squared, which is 1 over 4. So negative 2, 1 over 4. If x is equal to 1, we have y is equal to 1 half raised to the first, which is just 1 half. If x is equal to 0, we have y equals 1 half raised to the power of 0. Any number except for 0 raised to 0 is 1. And I managed to enter everything in the wrong place. But that's okay. Easily um, remedy. Let's see what happens if we raise 1 half to the negative 1. So for one half to the negative one, I'm going to make this longer. X equals negative one. Y equals one half to the negative one. Y is equal to one raised to the negative one over two raised to the negative one. Y is equal to one over one to the first over one over to the first, y is equal to 1 over 1 over 1 over 2. To divide two fractions, you take the numerator and multiply by the reciprocal denominator. So 
in the end, we get y is equal to 2 over 1. So please notice that we started with y being y equals to 1 half to the negative 1, and we ended with y equals to 2 over 1 to the first. So this is important information. We learn that if we have a over b raised to the power of negative n, this is the same as the reciprocal of a over b, so b over a raised to the power of n. Yes, we discussed this a long time ago. I'm just taking the time to review it. So, 1 half raised to the power of negative 1 is equal to 2. And finally, let's see what happens when x is negative 2. When x is negative 2, we have 1 half to the negative 2, which is the same as 2 over 1 to the positive 2, which is the same as 2 squared over 1 squared, or just 4. Now that we have all this information, now that we have all those points, we're ready to graph. So let's erase the board and graph. So here we go, we drew the y-axis and the x-axis on the x, we'll go to the left and to the right. On the y, we're going to go 4 up. Nothing down, so we have the point negative 2 and 4, negative 1 and 2, 0 and 1, 1 and a half, and 1 and 1, 4. Just as before, it doesn't matter what power I raise one half to, one half to any power will always be greater than zero. So if zero, if b is between zero and one, the graph of y equals b to the x looks like so. It models exponential decay. So if b is between 0 and 1, the group graph decreases from left to right. It models exponential decay. The domain consists of all real numbers. And the range, well, the range consists of all real numbers that are positive, that are greater than 0, OK? Next, let's consider what happens when b is greater than 1. We already did, at the very beginning of the lesson, y equals 2 to dx. I'm just going to put the table up. We already did all this work, so negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I'm not going to do it again. We saw that when x is negative 2, y is 1 fourth. When x is negative 1, y is equal to 1 half. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 2. And when x is 2, y is 4. So we talked about all of this. Let's go 1, 2 to the right, 1, 2 to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, up. Let's plot 2, 4, 1, 2, 0, 1, negative 1 and a half, and negative 2 and 1 fourth. Let's draw the graph. So the graph, when b is greater than 1, increases always. It models exponential growth. This is exponential growth. And the domain, just as previously, is still the all real numbers, and the range is still y is greater than 0. And so, that's about all you need to know about an exponential function for now.